Hey everybody, Darren Burroughs here. I'm standing in the living room of my brand new project in Hamilton, Ontario. And I wanted to walk you through the process on how you can tell whether you can remove an interior wall and whether that wall is load bearing or not. When it comes to interior design, the trend is definitely to open up spaces and for one area to flow into the other. And in these older homes, uh, this home was built in the 1950s, you used to have the kitchen here and then a wall and then the living room was on the other side of that wall. Well, now people wanna be able to open up the spaces and they want their kitchens to flow into their living rooms, to flow into their dining rooms, to flow into their entertaining areas. So if you can figure out how to open up your spaces, it's gonna be that much more beneficial. You're gonna be able to get higher rent but it's also going to increase the value of your property should you decide that you want to sell it later on down the line. So I'm going to give you a bit of a walk around here, show you some of the structure in this home. So we're going to be able to tell which walls we can remove and which walls we can't and then how we restructure that in order to be able to open up the spaces. If you're new to me and my channel, I talk about three main subjects, real estate investing strategies, tips and techniques, financial freedom and renovation and construction. If you haven't done so already, you can subscribe to my channel. You can also hit the notification bell and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. And without further ado, let's get into it. So right now I'm standing where there used to be an interior wall. And if you haven't seen my other videos in this series, uh, you can go and check out the pre-demolition video that we did and the post-demolition video that we did. So you can see the decisions we were trying to make with drywall and finishings on the walls as opposed to now when we've got everything opened up and it's easy to tell what we can and we can't remove. So in order to be able to open up this main floor space, which is our objective here, we have to figure out which direction the joists are running in this house. And one of the easiest ways to do that is to look at the way the house is laid out. What is the length of the house versus the width of the house? If if you've got a really narrow property, chances are the joists are going to be running across and picking up that whole span from outside wall to outside wall. But in the case of this house, this house is relatively square, so the joists could be running in any direction really but the house is definitely longer than it is wider. So the chances of there being a beam in the middle of the widest section of the property are pretty good. One of the ways that we can verify that is to go down and look in the basement first and look at the structure of how the basement is set up. And often the basement structure transfers to the main floor, which then transfers to the second floor. So before we go too much further, let's look at the structure in the basement and we'll be able to decide what's going on down there. And then we can see if that translates to the upper floors. So now that we're down in the basement, we can really tell what's going on with the structure. Just to give you some reference points, that's the front of the house there, that's the back of the house there. As I mentioned earlier, this house is a little longer than it is wide. So the chances of there being a beam running right down the middle of the house are pretty good. And now that we get down here, we can actually see that. We see that the beam is running all the way across the entire width of the house. And there's a post here and a post over there picking up the load on the middle of the span. In newer construction, you'd see a single steel post here. In these older homes, you see these concrete block columns. You can see right here, these two beams are split and this is actually picking up uh, the load for both of these beams here. If you look above here as well, you can also see that our joists are overlapping here. That's why we know this is picking up the structure for the main floor. The joists span from the outside wall to the middle beam and from that outside wall to this middle beam here. Just because there's no interior walls down here picking up structure, that doesn't necessarily mean the main floor is the same and it doesn't necessarily mean the second floor is the same as well. So you always have to look at how each floor is structured and how that load is transferred down to the basement and ultimately transferred down to the footings. So now we've had a chance to look at the structure in the basement, we wanna look at the main floor. And just to give you an idea of where the layout was before, there used to be a wall that was right here. So there was a doorway there, a doorway there. Uh, obviously this wall connected to here, there's a doorway here, and then there was a doorway back in the kitchen. So we really wanted to be able to remove this wall to remove this wall and to remove that little section of post there to open up the entire space. And the first thing we wanna do is look at the direction of the joists. So if we look up now, we can see that the, the joists are running this direction. So this wall here is a load bearing wall. We can also tell that this is a load bearing wall by the way that it's built. So if you look at the way that we've got a bottom plate, a stud, and then two top plates. Most of the time when you're dealing with structural walls, they'll have a double top plate. So anytime you see a double top plate, you can assume that that's a load bearing wall. The other thing that we want to look at is where the joists end. And if you can see, the joists are picked up on the outside wall and then they cross over right here in this section. So that means that where there's a crossing of joists, that's a load bearing wall that we cannot remove. That's picking up the structure of the house. We can also tell that this wall is perpendicular to the way that the joists are running. And when you've got a perpendicular wall to the direction of the floor joists, that usually means that that's going to be a load bearing wall. When you've got a wall that's parallel to the floor joist, it usually means that that wall can be removed without any structural implications. But if you go back and watch the post demolition video of Ben and I walking through the property, the kitchen ceiling had not been removed yet. We weren't sure 
how the structure was in this area. Because this wall we knew was load bearing, um, but we weren't sure what was happening here. And I made a suggestion that perhaps this wall could be picking up structure, and then this wall could be picking up structure as well, the joists could be spanning from here to here. So just because the basement is structured a certain way doesn't necessarily mean the main floor is also structured the same way. You have to think about how the joists would span, and if there's been interior alterations done at any point, and what they might have done to be able to restructure the home. But again, we can see on this uh, terribly framed bathroom wall that we've got a bottom plate, a stud, and then a double top plate. And you can also see the floor joists are overlapping above that. When we see that overlapping of the joists, we know that this wall is picking up structure and we can't remove this wall without putting in a beam. But we don't plan to remove this wall because the bathroom's gonna stay where it is, so we don't need to do anything with this wall and this structure here. But when we look at the other side of this kitchen wall that's separating the kitchen from the entrance, we look at the bottom plate, the stud, and the double top plate, we know this is load bearing. And if we go across and look at this where this post is removed, we've actually removed some structure here that shouldn't have been removed in the first place. Now before you freak out and think like the house is gonna collapse and cave in, it's not the end of the world. There's really only one piece of structure that's missing and right now, uh, one set of floor joists is kind of hanging out with no structure underneath that. We will fix that. We will be able to put a beam underneath it and jack that up and get it level again before we restructure this section. So it's not the end of the world. I wouldn't recommend it if you can avoid removing structure, but it does happen every once in a while and you just fix it and then move on. So now that we know that this is a load bearing wall and this is a load bearing wall and this is not a load bearing wall, how do we structure this main floor in order to be able to open up the space and do that safely and be able to have the house structured in a proper way? Anytime that we want to remove load bearing walls, we have to then put in beams in order to be able to pick up the loads of the floor joists above that. So our first option would be to run a beam from here to here and leave this post here and incorporate that into the kitchen design somehow. The other option would be to run a beam from here all the way to the outside wall and then tie in another beam from here to here and then another beam from here to here. We do need to run a beam from here to the outside wall, not because we have to pick up any load here, but because the only way for us to pick up the load on this kitchen wall here is to have a beam running across and for us to tie into the beam there. And the third option would be to run a beam from here all the way to the outside wall and then run a beam from here into this beam and then run a beam from here into this beam as well. If we wanna bring this all the way back to here though, now we need to figure out how we transfer that structure down into the basement below. But we know that our two posts are sitting here and over there, so if we bring a beam from here all the way to the outside wall, how do we pick up that structure below? Because we have to have everything transferred down below and transferred to the footings. So at this point, I would wanna consult an engineer to make sure that what we wanna do, if we wanna actually take it back to this point and run all the way to the outside wall, pick up the beam here and pick up the beam here, that we can do that and it makes sense structurally. And they'll design something that then the carpenters can come in and build. Depending on the length of the beam, we call that the span and the joist that it's picking up above the load, then that will tell us the material we're gonna use. Maybe that's an LVL beam, or maybe that's two two by tens or two two by twelves, whatever the engineer specs based on the calculations that they make. So after having looked at all the structure in the basement, the main floor and the second floor, now we kind of have a better idea of what we want to do with this space. But please, if you're doing any structural work on a property, make sure that you talk to an engineer and make sure that you get a sign off from them before you remove any walls that you're unsure of. I hope you guys found this video helpful on how to remove a load bearing wall. If you did, go ahead and hit that like button below. You can also subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and please feel free to leave comments and questions below for me. You can also follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or check out my website at darrenvoros.com. With that, I'll say thank you guys so much for watching. I wish you the best of success on your real estate investing journey, and I look forward to hearing your success stories very soon. You can knock these walls down, make it an eight-room luxury suite. <laughs> Jerry, these are load-bearing walls. They're not going to come down. <laughs> yeah, that's no good.